In this video, I'm going to tell you what you need to know about filters. Hi, Chris with RC Worst here, and today we're going to take a look at something that we get a lot of questions about, and that is water filters. There's a lot to choose from, and there's a lot of different variations, even in the sediment range, the carbon range, and so forth. So what we're going to just talk about is kind of some of the basic sciences behind the filters, the sizing, and kind of how all that plays out. So we've got a few different filters scattered around the table here that you can see, even a couple of housings to talk about as well. Um, so let's just start over on the left hand side. We've got these string wound filters here and string wound it, it almost looks kind of like a big ball of yarn. Um, it's, it's a very tightly wound uh, string material almost like a yarn like material and these filters are generally pretty inexpensive and they're quite effective at filtering out sediment. Um, and there's really not a whole lot you would use this type of filter for other than filtering out sediment, sand, dirt, debris, um, and even some light rust particles. And the big difference between these two, obviously, is size. So um, this filter is essentially double the size of this filter. So what that means to you, the homeowner, would basically be, um, making a mess here, would basically be the difference in size is a characteristic uh, of flow. So if you have a higher flow system or a higher volume system, you're going to need a larger filter for a couple of reasons. First off, a larger filter is going to allow more water at one time through the filter. Secondly, a larger filter is going to have a greater capacity for holding things like sediment and debris and buildup such as that. So by going with a larger filter, you're going to decrease the restriction on the system and also increase the length of time between having to change the filters. So even in the situation where maybe you've got a low flow, but you've got a lot of incoming sediment and debris, it might make sense to go with a larger filter just so that you're not having to replace and service that filter on a regular basis. So let's talk a little bit about um, a different type of sediment filter we have. This is a pleated type sediment filter, so it looks almost like an accordion uh, with the way that the, the pleats go in and out. This type of filter is mostly geared towards flow, whereas the, uh, the first one we talked about, the string filters, are a very generic kind of middle of the road type filter. Um, so a pleated filter, since it has a lot more surface area than a string type filter, it's going to offer less restriction and so it's going to impose less pressure loss on the system itself, which is kind of a nice thing to take into account um, if you install a new filter system in your house and opt for the less expensive string filter. And that's probably a good idea is going with the less expensive filters initially because you can always step up. It's oftentimes hard to step down though. So in the instance that you started out with a string filter and then the pressure was just too great or the pressure loss was too great, you weren't getting good pressure in the showers upstairs, something along those lines, then you might try a pleated type filter because it's going to allow more water to go through it with less restriction. The downside with pleated filters though is they don't have the density of these string type filters because if you look at a string filter, the string, it goes all the way through the body of the filter here, so the pet particles and sediment can kind of weave their way in and really saturate and fill the filter up before it's completely shut off. Whereas with a pleated type filter, the surface is what you get. So once the surface is completely covered, then it's time for a new filter. And I would say that in my experience, a lot of selecting a filter has to do with trial and error. You'll try one filter and perhaps not like it for one reason or another, and then you go to your filter specialist and ask for their recommendation based on whatever you don't like about the filter or the water or so on and so forth. Additionally, we have a couple of housings on the table. This is a smaller, pretty common housing. It's a clear housing. A lot of people like the clear housings because it gives you the ability to see into the filter and that's in some ways kind of a common misconception because usually this housing gets so dirty on the inside that you can't actually see the filter in there uh, unless you've recently replaced and then cleaned inside of there. So oftentimes what people hope to get out of a clear filter doesn't end up being the reality. Um, one reality that 
or one thing that is true about clear filter housings is that they're very susceptible to UV, so they're going to crack if uh, you know they've got direct sunlight on them or something along those lines. They just don't hold up very well. Um, then the alternative filter housing, uh, this is a more traditional or the most common, is the blue filter housing material. These ones tend to have a, kind of a softer plastic. They hold up a little bit better in UV situations. Again, you want to avoid direct sunlight on these whenever possible. It is plastic after all. Um, but the these type of housings tend to last a little bit longer. They don't become brittle with age uh, as these uh, clear housings do. Of course, there's always a, a time and a place. So in the instance that you're wanting to save a little money, the blue housings are oftentimes a little bit less expensive and they're also quite reliable, but they don't let you see in. And there are situations where you wanna be able to see into that filter. And then lastly, we do have a couple of basic carbon filters that we've brought to the table. These would probably be what I would describe as pointy use carbon filters just because of the size. Oftentimes when you're doing a carbon filtration, what you're wanting to do is remove taste or odor. Where these other ones are oriented towards sediment, these are going to help clean the water quality itself by eliminating uh, foul odors from sulfur or potentially pulling chlorine out of a, a local city water system where you've got that bad pool water type taste. Um, in, some, in some cases, you may have very chlorinated water and have to run it through a couple of carbon filters to actually get that taste and odor completely out. So this is a great application for these. These are a very inexpensive filter and they're, they're great to go under the kitchen sink or under the bathroom sink to clean that up at the point of use. That's where they get their name. Whereas these larger filters are considered more of a whole house type filter. Uh, you also can see we've got some small point of use string type filters. These again are going to help pick up that debris that may be um, plugging up your, your sinks and so forth where you've got those little screens in the faucets and uh, installing one of these types of filters can really help to alleviate that problem. So let's get a little bit more specific real quick and talk about some of the actual flow rates and pressure losses that you could expect when you're looking at some of these different filters. So the first one we've got is this large string wound filter. This is a five micron string wound filter and a filter like this you could expect to get upwards of about 15 or so gallons per minute without experiencing too much friction loss before it just no longer makes sense to use that filter. Uh, if we're going with the smaller string filter, the smaller string filter is rated at about 10 gallons per minute or so before that pressure loss starts to become an issue. The point of use filters, these are all uh, typically two gallons a minute or less. So again, point of use, that's where it gets its name. As I mentioned with the pleated filters, they're oriented towards higher flow. So this uh, filter over here, as opposed to this filter, this one's gonna be rated for closer to 20 gallons per minute. So less restriction on the system means more water through and less pressure loss uh, experienced by you, the user. So that about sums up our basic overview of filters and kind of what you can expect and why there are various sizes. The one last thing I will leave you with is that the sizes that we have here represented are essentially standard sizes and there's really only four major sizes that you're going to encounter with filters. You're going to encounter the four and a half by 20 inch filters, which is what this size is. You're going to encounter four and a half by 10 inch filters, which is what this size is, and then two and a half by 10 inch and two and a half by 20 inch. Those are essentially the only four. Oftentimes if you're shopping online, it can be hard to determine if a filter is gonna fit your housing. In most cases, uh, even if the measurements aren't exact, those four standard sizes apply and are generally gonna be able to fit into those housings. So keep that in mind. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. We are gonna get a little bit more specific and actually go through and talk about some of these filters in later videos. So thanks for joining me today. Don't forget, like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.